Welcome final expense agents and brokers to the most popular audio training and podcast in the industry, The Lead Jerk Show, where we cut through the red tape and give you only the best in expert interviews. So strap in and grab a cold beverage and get ready to learn and earn. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you to the one and only Matt Lowry, also known as The Lead Jerk. All right, everybody, it's Matt Lowry, The Lead Jerk, from www.theleadjerk.com. Hey, we got a really good interview. It's with Cody Shirley from finalexpenseappointmentsetters.com. Again, that's finalexpenseappointmentsetters.com. So you guys sit back, enjoy this uh, podcast, and uh, use it for the knowledge that is gleaned in it. Thanks so much. All right, everybody, I'm here with Cody Shirley, and he is with FinalExpenseAppointmentSetters.com. Again, that's FinalExpenseAppointmentSetters.com. And, um, Cody, I guess I just want you to, if you could, just make a, you know, kind of a brief introduction about yourself and kind of how you got in the, the business and, and what you guys uh, do. Great. Thanks a lot, Matt. We, uh, I appreciate you having us on your podcast this week or sure. month and it's very nice of you thank you very much sure thing. um yeah we uh yeah so uh, uh my name's cody shirley and of course you thanks for plugging the website there really appreciate that sure and uh yeah so we you know i i started doing um you know appointment setting we've been doing this for about two years now and really how it stemmed was uh you know at the time i i, I had a an agency that we um, did on the final expenses and and you know a lot of the agents of course it's the same problem with with every agent who who sells and that is how do you sit down with more people uh, more frequently faster you know it's how do you, how do you do what you do for more people and do it quicker and we found that the appointment setting is is really one of the keys one of them of course there's many but one of the keys that really helps us you know get a hold of more people and and maximize the leads that we get because leads are expensive, they're not cheap. Sure. And so we've we've really utilized this, and and it's developed into something which, like like many businesses, we never thought it would end up that direction, but it just kind of did. So, right. Um, yeah, I've I've been selling final expense now for about eleven years, and at this point in my career, I I mostly personal produce uh, for a, a lot of different reasons. And anybody who's ever managed before <laughs> it can, uh, I'm sure empathize yeah. with a lot of those reasons. It's a, uh, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of headache. And, and, uh, I've, I found for myself, I, I feel like I'm much happier right. <laughs> just going out and writing a hundred or 150,000 a year myself. I understand that exactly. So yeah. how, how did you get, you know, started in, in setting appointments for, uh, final expense agents? Uh, you know, um, I guess it would be obviously you were fairly good and I'm sure you just took it to the next level but it was really interested in that how you got started and you know offering it as a service to agents sure so uh, it, it really started out you know I was trained traditionally by you know guys who have been doing this for 25 30 years and uh, their their whole approach is door knock door knock door knock never call never set appointments and things like that and you know, as I was at a, as I would go out and and door knock, I progressively over the 11 years I've had more and more people say you're crazy. You, you know, we want appointments. Right. And so I thought, well, I'll give that a shot. So I started calling, you know, myself and and uh, started setting my own appointments that way and found some success with it. And then I thought, wow, gosh, maybe I can you know set for some of my guys and gals who are working with me. So I had them start to submit their leads, and you know, uh, as a personal producer myself, I thought, dang, I, you know, to call through 100 leads and, you know, three three times, uh, you know, three times in a week is a lot of work. And so I I had a really good assistant with me at the time uh, named Michelle, and she was great. And she said, oh, why don't I try? You can train me how to do it. So I said, sure, let's do it. So, you know, Michelle started calling through. And I taught her exactly what what I say and how I do it, and and uh, she had pretty darn close, you know, to the same success that I had, and it freed up 
a lot of hours in a week to where I could sit down with more people myself rather than calling for the appointments. Right. And it kept a lot of my agents more busy as well. And so that's how we kind of got into it. And then, um, you know, one of the, one of the groups I had worked with caught wind of our appointment setting and they said, well, you know, uh, one of the agents, not the group, but one of the agents said, well, do you guys want to try setting for me too? And I said, well, I never considered that, but sure. And he says, well, what do you charge? And I said, I've got no idea. <laughs> so we started, we came up with a couple of different packages and being really ignorant to how the majority of the appointment setters charge, uh, we kind of came up with our own deal and uh, started charging that way. And we had a lot of people that just said, man, you guys are you know, about half as much as everybody else. Right. And then at that point, I started digging around and realized that to, to be the case. And so we, we got into it, Matt, just um, by default, actually. Started doing it for, for myself and then some of my, some of my people and then, uh, you know, some more people. And before you knew it, I thought, dang, I think we've got a full-blown business here if we, can, right. if we can run it correctly. Just kind of started growing organically and through word of mouth is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yes, and that's that's really how that's the only way we've done it. Really, uh, you know, we've never paid advertising ever, right. which is great. We've really just done it based off of, um, you know, word of mouth is really the only way we've done it. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny you say that because I think there's there'll always be a need for uh, you know good appointment setters in in final expense or, or Medicare even you know any of any of the those type of industries. It just seems like. Um, you know, there's only so much an agent can do in a day. Um, and like I said, Correct. a lot of agents maybe enjoy doing their own. Um, I, I don't, never have. And, you know, so that's uh, oh, yeah. that's kind of where I feel the majority of, of guys or gals are with that, it, you know, focusing more on the sale versus the prompting to, to um, you know, get, get the appointment on the phone. It just makes better ROI, in my opinion, and, and, and much better ROI than door knocking. I can say that with a fact oh yes and the the efficiency is is great too and and in my experience too matt i i feel like we you know one thing that we hear a lot is that we hear you know agents say you know i'm really good once i get in front of somebody but Mm -hmm. i just hate door knocking or i just hate this or i hate that and and we found that to be the case as well as it's just uh it's it's not everybody's favorite thing to do that's for sure yeah and, and it's like um you probably do like I do. I study a lot of business models, and from what I can see, you know, a lot of times the most successful salespeople, no matter what it is, um, you know, they have a system in place like that where they're not the ones actually, you know, in a decent company anyway, if they're a quote-unquote employee, um, they're not the ones that are, you know, having to struggle to generate a lead, to cold call, to produce a lead, and then also set the appointment, you know, grinding. Now, with that being said, they're not spoon-fed everything either, but, you know, if agents are spending their hard-earned money on generating leads for these uh, insurance carriers, then they should lighten the load a little bit, I think, and, and outsource the, the appointment setting. Uh, it's, it's, it's a grind if you don't, you know, <laughs> after a while. Yeah, oh, yes, a- a- absolutely. And, and it all boils down to, you know, what's the value of your time? And if I can... You know, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. You find out what your time is worth, and if it makes more sense to pay somebody a, a little bit less to, you know, take some of that off your plate and either, one, make your life easier or, two, make you more money, um, you know, that's how you start to get to the big production numbers. And the big, the big, big producers in this industry, in my opinion, uh, they, they do a hybrid of the two. They you know, do. they've got either an appointment setter or they set themselves or – you know, some way to work more leads in a shorter and a shorter amount of time, and work them efficiently and correctly. Which is, you get you know, you get with as many of those leads as humanly possible. And sometimes you just, if you're door knocking, you just get people that don't answer the door. You know, if they don't have an appointment with you, or you're working in a city where right. you know you've got call boxes and things like that. I mean, it's just tough to really sit down with somebody unless you've got an appointment. Well, yeah, and, and I've done the numbers on even gas expense, wear and tear, you know, on vehicle, and, and, and then you're factoring your time on that too. Um, with door knocking, I mean, you're you're gonna be, you know, it's gonna be less expensive in my opinion to to have a appointment setter 
um, bar none after after you factor in your time and what you're actually making per hour in, in your career so absolutely yep, um, absolutely so Cody where, where are you guys located at so we are out of Meridian, Idaho, which okay. is uh, a little a little small town. Idaho small to begin with, but you've got <laughs> Boise, Idaho, which yeah, it's about 250,000 people. And then you have uh, the next little town next to it's called Meridian. And uh, we're, we're out of Meridian, Idaho. So we're rural, uh, rural folks ourselves. Sure. What, what kind of weather you guys got there? I'm curious. <laughs> oh man, uh, this summer was a brutal one. We had a lot of snow, and a lot of a lot of these P and C companies are paying out like crazy. But yeah, we had a ton of snow this year. But today it's bright sunshine. We got some rain for the afternoon. But I'm telling you, it's I, I love this area. It's wonderful. I I don't, you know, we've lived in a lot of places over the years, and mm-hmm. and Idaho is by far my favorite. But you're not allowed to move here. So anyway, right. listen to this. <laughs> Idaho is terrible. It's it's off. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to you don't want to ruin it for the locals. <laughs> Oh, heavens no. No, it, about, when was it? Last year, I think, USA Today did the top 10 uh, cities to live in, and and um, uh, Meridian, Idaho was number one. So with that has come outrageous growth, which yeah. is great for final expense, you right. know, as far as potential counts and things like that. But uh, Traffic and... <laughs> yeah, I, I used to live in the rural part of the city or of the town, and now we've got a Walmart within walking distance and, right. you know, a dozen restaurants that are all franchised. So <laughs> it's ready to move again, I guess. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I've got a friend actually in the business, and he um, he's, he's uh, he lives in Tennessee, and he actually uh, has already mapped out his five-year forecast and goal. I think it was he had chose either Iowa or Idaho. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> So yeah, I tell him Idaho's terrible. Say I'm from a guy it's a bad place. He'll probably hear this. So <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> man. All right. Well, in that case, he can hit me up. I'll I'll help him find a nice place. I, out here. I can edit. <laughs> uh, so what, Cody? Tell me a little bit. What's what's the process to do business with you guys? I know you got the website set up, and and I peruse. It looks like it's pretty um, pretty cut and dried on on what there is, but is you know. Um, like any business, people you know call you sometimes, even if you don't have a web, even if you have a website and all the examples and information in there. But what's what's the best process to do business with you guys if agents want to um, contact you and and uh, learn more about you and stuff? Great. Well, th- yes, uh, that's a great question, and we we try and make the website. Uh, do a hundred percent of the work that it's capable of doing Mm -hmm. so if we've got agents who just want more information or they've got some questions um, you know you can always go to the website and and check that out and it's uh, www.finalexpenseappointmentsetters.com and then uh, you know you've got you know a QA and a section you've got a how it works but to, to answer the question simply just go to the website and read through as much of it as you can. It'll answer most of your questions, and um, it's it's real simple. You pick the package that works the best for you, based on the number of leads that you plan on submitting uh, for us to call. And you go in, you fill out your form, and we've got a little upload link on there. You click the upload link, you submit your leads, uh, you provide all the information that we ask for. And from there, we get everything. So you, you pick the package, you do uh, your you know your payments on on the website. Right. You pick the package, you submit all your leads through the website, um, and you just share your Google Calendar with us. And I'm sure we'll get into that in a minute. But sure. you share the Google Calendar with us, so we know your availability. And typically, we found uh, we need at least one phone call between the two of us, right? So that we can make sure that we've got everything correct and and iron out any you know details because you know when we're you know we're dealing with a very large financial investment uh, on B and we know that and so we want to try and and make it as smooth as humanly possible and we found that between the website and a phone call we can get 99 percent of that done gotcha okay cool so <clears throat> what um you you mentioned some of the packages there that are on your website that i'd seen can you um Give us a little breakdown, maybe on. I think you had four different programs that I saw um, that different, you know, different levels. Because you know, everybody's not full time. You got some part time guys. You got some kind of guys that transition from part time to full time. Uh, which I've seen most guys that did that. Uh, it was through the use of an appointment setter. Yes. Um, which is uh, yeah, funny. interesting, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, can you give us a little breakdown, maybe, of those uh, four different ones and kind of how that works for you? 
Sure. Yes. Yeah. So we we there's four different packages that agents can pick from. Um, and we've got a couple of add-ons, but for, for the most part, there's four different packages. We've got a part-time producer, uh, a full-time producer, a superstar producer, and then we have a, a bulk, you know, volume package, which is our, our agency uh, package. Mm -hmm. And so really what we do is you pick the package based on the number of leads that you plan to submit, uh, either on a weekly or monthly basis. And so, you know, for a part-time producer, you know, someone who's just maybe getting their feet wet, trying to test it out, or they try and, you know, or they work maybe a lot of Medicare, uh, you know, uh, plans, and then they just want to add in some final expense, you know, in the off season or something, uh, a part-time producer is a great option. Um, and on, on that plan, you can submit up to 60 leads a month, or that averages out to about 15 leads a week. Right. And then you've got a full-time producer, which in my experience, those are agents who are typically working, you know, around 25 leads a week or as many as 100 a month. Um, that's a, you know, that's a decent package for a guy who's consistently working, you know, two, three days a week in the field. You know, they're putting in about 25 hours uh, in the field. That's the, that would be the program to go with that. And then the superstar package, which is, uh, I would say, hands down, and I'm sure uh, JP, you know, my partner would agree with it. He, you know, it's the superstar package is where we get the best results and we've got the most continued success along with subscribers. Um, and that is 50 leads a week mm -hmm. uh, on average or 200 leads a month. And uh, that's for the, the producer who's doing this full time. They don't really do much else. They likely don't manage uh, other agents. Right. And they're just, you know, they're cranking out some serious numbers. And we've got, you know, some agents that do as much as 400,000 a year mm -hmm. off of a plan like that, you know, and, you know, anywhere from 150 to 400K a year in production. Right. Are typically the ones who would use, you know, that type of a, of a plan. And then the, uh, the agency package, we're, we're capable of, of handling really as many agents as some, as a company has. And that's really our bulk, our bulk. Um, you know, so we uh, just signed up an agency here uh, last week, and you know, with them, they're planning on, you know, anywhere from 200 a week to start out with, and then they plan on increasing it, assuming that we do everything that we say we're capable of doing, which sure. we are. Okay. And so, uh, on on you know, the agency size uh, program, we do more of a one-on-one. -on -one. We try and figure out what they're looking for, uh, and then we get a you know, a bid over to them as far as what we think we can get and what we should charge based off of what they plan on doing. Gotcha. Okay. And so it all depends on how many leads a, an agent's working. If you're working a lot, we can com accommodate that. If you're not working very much, we can accommodate that. We'll, we'll take either one. We don't discriminate. So. Okay. Excellent. What, um, Cody, what's, you know, as far as uh, making the most use out of this, what's the most important thing you know, agents can do if they're transitioning to to using your service. Or has there, do you, have you guys kind of figured out kind of what your, you know, uh, cookie cutter model is as far as uh, what an agent needs to do to 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 come on board with you guys? Yeah. So like the, do's and the don'ts, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a great question. So the the two biggest things I think an agent can do to make the transition easy. All right is is one their their lead source mm -hmm. we will call any lead that someone submits to us and and uh you know in, in a minute i think we'll talk about what makes us different from everybody else but sure. you know we will call any lead that an agent sends to us whether it's an a, a a lead you know being really fresh to a b lead maybe a few months old or maybe they've been worked once or twice to a c lead of you know just almost garbage, wow. you know, almost cold calling type of the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know we'll, call, we'll call any of those. We don't call cold call lists. We don't do that because right. our service isn't designed for those types of things. But right. uh, the number one thing an agent can do is provide either fresh leads or refreshed leads. Right. And so if, if you're getting, you know, 25 to 50 fresh leads a week, those are easy. You just submit them and, 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 you know, the callers call on them. If we're working something that's a little bit older, I highly, highly recommend a refresher letter, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, it is, it's amazing. You know, you can take a lead that someone submitted, you know, a, uh, you know, six months ago or some as old as two years ago 
you know, and, and send out this refresher letter, and we can give you instructions on the website on how to do that. It's on there. Okay. But you, you send out this refresher letter, and as soon as they get it, you know, we call right behind that letter, you know, a day or two later, hopefully, if we can time it right. And then it's like you have a brand new lead. Right. And the results are huge. I mean, as far as that compared to, I don't remember, you know, calling somebody who hasn't had it refreshed. Right. And getting, oh, I don't remember, or what is this, or blah, blah, blah. You know, you know right. the same stuff we always get. It's going to trigger the memory. Yeah, I remember getting that in the mail the other day. Yeah. Yes. So it's just like a fresh lead. It, that's probably the number one thing to make it an easy transition because typically agents, you know, they'll have some new, you know, they'll have some fresh leads and then they'll have some old stuff they just couldn't quite reach. Right. And if you can submit, you know, mostly fresh stuff and then throw in some of the older stuff in there that you've refreshed, that makes for the best results. That's the first thing. And the second one is with Google calendars. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's been our number one uh, issue, I would say, is getting the Google calendar set Same. up. Yeah. Um, what's nice is that we can access the agent's calendars and make changes to it, which means we can view their availability and input their schedules. But we have had the darndest time. And if anybody has a solution to that problem, I would love to know it. But um, <laughs> yeah. getting it organized in a timely manner without 50 emails back and forth. Right. And so that's really where our, our onboarding call has really helped out with getting everything set up. In, in getting agents uh, to where we can have the Google Calendar set up. So yeah. to answer the question, refresh the letters with with good with a good lead source, um, or you know if it's a you know if it's a telemarketed call, which is I know uh, what you guys do out there at the Lead Jerk. Sure. Um, that's a little bit of a different process, but uh, it, it's also very effective. You know we've got a whole plan for for how we would work a telemarketed lead too, and. And that might be something we talk about later, or we can sure. talk about it now. Well, let me ask you this: uh, They probably need to let you know what they're sending, right? When they send over, like, if it's twenty-five fresh leads, they probably need to tag it somehow and let you know. And they do they let you need, need to let you know, hey, these are a little older. This is the age range on these leads. Yes. Okay. Yes. So on the upload page, which is it, it's in the main menu on the website, in the upload mm -hmm. page. Uh, where, when agents submit their weekly leads, uh, we, we typically want the leads by end of business on Friday so we can mm -hmm. have every you know all the callers set up and scheduled for the following week. Right. But on the upload page, uh, we we have lead information where you know they submit the number of leads, the lead source, how old they are, you know what the copy is on either the lead card itself or uh, the copy as far as, you know, the, the telemarketed lead source. Right. You know, so for like Lead Jerk, someone would submit, you know, um, Lead Jerk leads, telemarketed, you know, either the avatar or the live lead. Right. And then if we can even just get, even if it's just a link, you know, to the website. Right. Um, then we can go on and listen to samples. That way we can, you know, when we're making the calls, we can reference the lead, most appropriate lead to jog the memory of that person. Yeah. And there's also a section in there where they can put in, uh, you know, special requests or special instructions. If they have something they feel like they need to communicate, it's all there on the website. I mean, and, and if it's not, just call us. We don't, okay. we don't care. Call okay. us. It's not a big deal. Gotcha. Excellent. So, um, the next obvious question is what what makes you guys? I mean, I think you've done a fabulous job at it, at explaining what makes you guys different. But what what do you think are the reasons that an agent would pick you guys over you know another another appointment setting service and so forth? Great, I love this question, Matt, and uh, it's my favorite. And the reason why is because we are different. Uh, it's not you know a bunch of BS of you know right. we're doing the same thing. We are very different, and the biggest difference is in how we charge. So for us, um, you know, we charge based off of the number of leads the agent is submitting right. rather than appointments set. So for us, you know, or I'll put it this way, with most appointment setting services, they charge based off of the appointments that they set. Correct. Well, what is a set appointment? And everyone's definition to that is very different. And, you know, as a set appointment, meaning they set the appointment, but somebody no showed, whatever it is, that can create a lot of back and forth headache as far as what is owed to that company or that, you know, mom and pop shop or whatever it is that's calling and setting your appointments for you. Right. We're very different. You know, we don't set garbage appointments simply because we're not compensated that way. 
we are compensated based on the number of leads that we're calling. And so for us, there's no need for us to set garbage appointments because it doesn't benefit us in any way. Right. For us, we call the lead, we either set the appointment or we don't, we do our best. And if there's an appointment available in that lead that we're calling, we're gonna get it. You know, we try and overcome objections. We don't provide a ton of information over the phone. Right. Uh, we don't pre-qualify. We figure that is not our role. Our right. role is that when the agent's out working that week, he sits down with somebody and he can go through that process, he or she. Correct. Yep. And so it's the subscription service, which is nice, which means you're getting a higher quality of appointments, uh, which for us is important too because we can't set garbage. If we set garbage, people don't use us for more than a right, month. Right, right. They'll dump you. And yeah. so yeah. it puts uh, the burden of quality on us but yet it puts the burden of the lead source on the agent. Sure. So a lot of agents who are submitting less, uh, you know, older leads, you know, BC leads, and they want us to call through them, uh, we'll definitely do it. But they just have to know that the, 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 the probability or the success of those leads are going to be less desirable based on the quality of that lead. Right. So if we're calling a lead jerk lead that's, you know, a couple days old, that's success. We can we can make something happen with that. If it's a you know an internet lead that was shared between ten agents right. <laughs> and submitted six months ago, and it's already been called through fifty times, mm -hmm. our success is likely not going to be real high on that. Right. You're gonna have to trip and fall over those. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, they're they're tough, and we'll call them if somebody wants, but they just have to know ahead of time. Uh, you know, we're not magicians. Sure. You know, we we have a very specific way that we do it, and and we are very unique in the subscription compared to price per appointment. The other nice thing is, um, you know, we provide uh, call logs daily. So uh, we have, you know, our call software, we go through call it on every single connection that we make, we make notes of what was said during that call. Okay. Uh, and at the end of every day, we submit a call log of all connections to the agent every day that we call. So they get, you know, an Excel spreadsheet of, of what happened. So as they're going throughout that week and working their leads, they know what's going on, so right. they can work them efficiently and effectively. Right. They know what activities so, taking place. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, some of the other things we do. Uh, you know, if there's a no show, or somebody wants a request for a callback in the future, we handle both of those things. Um, trying to think a couple of other things. We leave a voicemail on the third dial that we do. Okay. Uh, we leave a voicemail for the for the lead and we have it a couple different ways where we can have the agent's phone number as the return call. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we leave a voicemail and somebody wants to talk to us, they can call the agent back directly or they can call us back. Either one doesn't make any difference. Right, right. Uh, we also use local phone numbers. so. And with any agent, whether they're working in Massachusetts, Idaho, or California, makes no difference. We select our local phone numbers based on the area that we're calling in. Smart man, smart man. That always helps a lot. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. Tons. It does. And um, I'm sure you handle that with them for getting all that routed out. However, you know, I, I yes. know, I know, I know how it works. But that's <laughs> that's between you and your customers. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And that's and and those are all things. Um, you know, on the onboarding call or through the, you know, you know, when you're getting a hold of us, right. and those are all easy, easy solutions, easy answers, but probably better for a one-on-one -on -one situation, probably. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. Because yeah. you could have three or four area codes in the same county, and yes. they may want to one certain one they're targeting or whatever. Okay. Correct. Yep. Excellent. Yep. So you mentioned before you work, uh, you know, all types of leads. So um, you do direct mail, telemarketing, internet. Um, just wanted to make you know make sure on that that you know the guys listening to this because you got some guys that work just direct mail you know as well as I do you got guys that work direct mail and tele leads you got guys that work all three and then you've got some that just work tell leads only so uh -huh, correct <laughs> you know it kinda... yeah and and the scripts are going to change Matt you know one to the other the scripts are going to change how we approach it is a little bit different um, yeah and it's <laughs> you know coming from myself kind of old school it's all been direct mail uh -huh. and as i've realized the cost difference between direct mail and telemarketed uh it's it's a difference yeah, i mean it is. um it's a significantly cheaper to do the telemarketed leads 
I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, I feel like you need uh, maybe a few more with the telemark or with yeah, the telemarketed leads. Yeah, I would leads. agree. Yeah, yeah, you do. And the freshness is is the biggest issue. Uh, yeah. You know, if if you can get to that telemarketed lead within a reasonable time frame of you know 24 to 48 hours, yep. the likelihood of that turning into an appointment and a sale is drastically better than waiting a long period of time. Yeah, and I would and I would also add to that that. Um, you know, some guys will, and we talk to guys about this, they'll say, well, should I just door knock the, the telemarketing lead? And I'm like, no, so these guys, they're they're pretty good about answering the phone when you call back, because that's how the lead was generated in the first place. Yes. Um, you know, so I'm, you know, some guys do, but I, I wouldn't advise it. I never have. I don't, you know, so. Yeah. That's another and, reason to have an appointment setter, in my opinion, you know. Oh yes, and and the, the 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 lead source for the telemarket, you know, the to the telemarketing company, the marketing company you're using, it uh, does make a difference. I mean, um, you know, a, you know, high quality telemarketed lead, uh, which is what you guys provide. You know, sure. that that live the yeah. live lead that you guys do is great. Yeah. You know, we call for a couple of guys who use you know your leads yeah. and you know other companies, but. Um, the quality is significantly better. Th- uh, how am I putting this? Not all lead companies, telemarketed, direct mail, or internet, are created equal. Yeah, they're not. And so, work <laughs> with uh, one that knows what they're doing, which clearly, you know, lead jerk knows what they're doing. Yeah, so. and and, and uh, vice versa with <clears throat> appointments in a company. Somebody you can actually hear and know who who's behind the screen and behind the microphone. I mean, guys, hear you right here. They know who you are. They know where you're located now. You know, they they know your website. They can go there. Hey, this is a real company. This is a real guy. And some of these companies out there, whether it's for appointment setting or for leads, I mean, <clears throat> it's a it's a blind face on the net. You know, it, you don't know who you're buying it from. Uh, you don't know. You know, you just you just don't know. You got to be careful. Yes, agreed. So. Yep, agreed. And you have to be careful too because some. I mean, they'll sell that lead multiple oh, times. Oh yeah. I mean, so, and that. Yeah. Again, for whether you got an appointment set or not, it can be a problem if you're, if you think you're getting one thing but really you're getting another. That's true. So yes, quality of company is That's, is absolutely imperative. And I'll tell you that is our number one question: Are these exclusive? Um, and yes, they are. And I'll add to this: uh, <laughs> the infrastructure you actually have to have to resell leads two, three, and four times is more than I'm willing to deal with. You know, I mean, you really, you really have to. Uh, if in order for a company to do that, they've got to be set up to do that. It's just not like thrown in a file. I, I mean, could you imagine? You know, with thousands of leads coming through a week, um, it would be a nightmare. So, oh. you know, being exclusive is easier than than trying to rip folks off. I'll tell you that much. Well, it is, and even if the, I mean, let's say the infrastructure was equal, mm. the headache, yeah. oh my gosh, the headache, yeah. the having to deal with the phone calls, like. Well, yeah, I thoughts. got this lead, and this guy got the same lead, and he's, I referred him to you, that's the kind of calls you get. Oh my gosh, all day long, and it's like, all right, I, for the for the possibility of, you know, unethical profits, yeah. not worth it, in my opinion, no. I'm sure you agree with me, and I just, it, yeah, it, not worth it, so. Yeah. No, nope, so we're not going to do it. Yeah, no, um, bad companies in this industry tend to be the light shined on them pretty quickly if you know where to look. So that's yes, that. yeah, <laughs> it comes it comes really really fast. Yep, yeah, bad publicity is uh, it's not always this. good publicity. <laughs> yeah, I, that's all I want. All I want is good, and we and the thing is too, and, and you know, in, in today's market, you know, information is so readily available. Yep. and I'm sure you agree. I we bend over backwards, Matt to make people happy. I mean, sometimes to the point of losing money, yeah. we just want an agent to be happy, mainly because we want them to be happy. That's the first reason Two, you know, we want to provide a quality service and, and do it, ex, you know, you know, exceed expectations. But three, the negative police, polis- you know, publicity just gets passed on so fast. It's like, ah, I don't want to deal with it. So yeah, uh, you know, like you, we just want to do the best humanly possible job that we can based off of you know what we have to work with, and, well, and that's what we do. Well, the appointment setting, like you guys do, you know, um, you do a good job for one agent. You know, he's going to tell probably five, five to six others. Oh uh, yes, it's been our experience from our end with what we do. So, um, you know, it just makes more sense, and then it just starts multiplying. 
you know, and, uh, yep, treat, treat people the way you want to be treated, and usually good things happen. So, well, and with that said, too, you know, me me still selling yeah. final expense. Yep. I know exactly what an agent goes through on a weekly basis. <laughs> yep. I, there's, I mean, eleven years of knocking and mm-hmm. calling, you know, however many thousands of times that is. I I couldn't even count probably, but I just I know how I want to be treated. And so that's how we try and treat all of our agents is is give them how I would want to be treated. And with that too, you know, I'm able to sniff out unreasonable ex, you know expectations. Right. You know, if someone sends us, you know, 50 you know B and C leads, and they want me to book them, you know, uh, eight appointments a day for five days straight. I can say you're out of your freaking mind. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Like that's just yep. not going to happen. Yep. Rookie agents too, and you guys or gals come into business. You know, I'm sure you probably do a little bit of hand holding with them initially. We do, you know, and you kind of have to, uh, for whatever reason, their their company or their IMO or whatever hasn't, you know, sometimes done a good job of, you know, setting those expectations or sometimes no training whatsoever. Um, Correct. <laughs> depending on who they're with. Yes. But uh, you know, just kind of explain that, like you said, and setting a little bit of expectations, I find goes uh, really a long a long way for them. Yes. Yeah. If, at least if they if people know what they're expecting, then when they get what they're expecting, there's no surprises. It's when we overpromise and underdeliver that uh, agents get bent out of shape, and I don't I don't blame them. No, I don't it either. ticked me off too. I've been there. It's not like yep. you have to. Yep. So. Yep. Well, cool. Absolutely. Well, we're running up on about uh, 34, 35 minutes, and uh, man, I think we covered a ton in that amount of time. Enough yes, to thank you. Somebody to get a get a good grasp on um, what finalexpenseappointmentcenters.com is about. So, if you could, Cody, could you just uh, um, lay out again the uh, the website, your name, all that good stuff, and uh, sure, that's where yep, to contact yep. you. Absolutely, yeah. So we are uh, www.finalexpenseappointmentcenters.com. If you can't remember that, you got trouble. But uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, so that's us. Um, and uh, you can contact myself. Uh, you know, this is our direct line, area code 208-351-0579. You can reach us on that. Uh, you can also email us. All that information's on the website. We've got a contact us page if you want to go on there. Uh, my my partner, J.P. Perryman, um, he does most of the the uh, operations side of things he's he's really good at that he he's got a great resume and uh you know he partnered on the business uh with me here not too long ago and he's been a huge huge help as far as being able to handle the operations sure. side and so you'll if you call us or email us it'll be myself or him who gets back with you most likely him and uh we're we're here to help you we'd love to uh you know service as many agents as we possibly can and help them be more profitable okay Excellent. And what I'll do is I'll make sure um, in the description of this uh, podcast, I'll have your URL there to your website. Um, Thanks. I'll go back through. Yeah, I'll post your phone number and all that good stuff. And uh, so all you guys uh, listening, um, reach out to Cody at uh, finalexpenseappointmentcenters.com. Let him know you heard about them from us. We we appreciate it. We don't have any kind of... uh, you know any kind of affiliation other than I just think they're a, a, a good fit for a lot of agents and and I think you'll agree once you go and look at their uh, <laughs> their subscription packages I mean it's they're they're pretty tight <laughs> thank you thank you yes thank you very much so I guess that'll be it Cody um, I'm gonna let you run again I, I appreciate your time on this uh, this uh, Monday afternoon and uh, if we can do anything for you give me a call and uh, uh, I'll have this probably posted in the next uh, probably next three or four days. I'll have it and I'll uh, shoot you out a link. Great, thanks a lot, Matt. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. All righty, that was a great podcast, and I appreciate Cody taking his time <clears throat> this afternoon to speak with us. Um, hope you guys learned a little bit uh, more about setting your appointments. And uh, give Cody a call, uh, finalexpenseappointmentsetters.com. Again, finalexpenseappointmentsetters.com. And be sure to visit our website to learn more about our leads, www.theleadjerk.com. Again, www.theleadjerk.com. And Matt Lowry, talk to you guys later.